Welcome to the Whiskey Vault. I am Rex. Dan wasn't here and I forgot to put on my medallion. Dan's feeling under the weather. Don't tell Dan. It's very disappointing that you, after how many episodes? All the episodes. You need a human being. I know. To come in here. That is Dan's job at this point. He comes yeah. in here. Thanks, fiddles, Dan. Fiddles with the camera, pushes the button, and says, Daniel. Put on your medallion. And I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, Thank you. What's the thing today? So we are doing a comparison um, of not a whiskey that people can get, yes. but a beer that people can get, along with a whiskey that was interacted with with that beer. Okay, first of all, Dragon's Milk. I like Dragon's Milk. Yeah. I've had it many times. Yeah. And beer barrel bourbon. Yeah, this is made by New Holland, the same guys who make the beer. Nice. And they, make, uh, they made a bourbon, and then they finished it for three months in yeah. Dragon's Milk barrels. Nice. Yeah, so yeah. what we're going to do is try the Dragon's Milk and the whiskey. What do you want to try first? Straight from the teat. You want to try the... Um, Dragon's Milk. Yeah, let's see the original thing here. From the teat. Oh, I should probably, we learn from our beer guy. Pour it gently. You know what? Uh, looking at buying a paint mixer, because I've heard this before. A paint you, mixer? Yeah, because you, know, you don't want to bruise the whiskey, gently do all of these fiddly things. It's like, okay, well, if you went in blind, and you put a bottle of whiskey into a paint mixer. Uh, and you're like, Burr! Yeah, I did it for like 20 minutes. Right. And then, you know, half the bottle went into the paint mixer, the other half the bottle went into just not a paint mixer. Could you tell the difference by bruising the whiskey? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe the bruising thing isn't a thing at all. When did, where did you hear the bruising thing? I don't want to say his name because, you know, people would be like rolling their eyes and making them feel bad. But, oh, okay. Yeah. Um, okay. I, I just nosed this like a whiskey. I really do like Dragon Smoke. Yeah. It's a nice beer. Oh, it's been a long time. Yeah. Dark chocolate and raspberries for some reason really? just showed up in my nose. Like there's berries in this that remind me of a almost peanut butter and yeah, it's almost Captain Crunch. Captain Crunch? Yeah, this okay. is weird. Oh, like cereal grain. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm not getting that much sweetness though. No, no. It's it's a weird left-handed. This there is kind of there's like a Guinnessy dark stout quality on that. Oh, I like that soft and creamy and ah. I remember I liked this one. Okay, so we're gonna try their bourbon. I don't know how old it is, but I do know that it spent, according Ooh. to the bottle, three months. It's bready. In beer barrels. Bready and milky and dark and rich. Damn, damn. What did you say? This is a single barrel too. Okay. Uh, this is, by the way, barrel 18G16ABC-1 at 100 proof. So let's see. Oh, this is a gift. From Magnificent Bastards, Matthew and Shannon Lorenz. Matthew and Shannon Lorenz, you magnificent! Bastards! Oh. Alright. Uh, okay. okay. These are the situations where, first of all, I love that we have the beer to compare. Mm -hmm. But, this is me being greedy to also be able to compare this spirit that did not go into oh, yeah, one by one. the Dragon's yeah, Milk barrel side. to see exactly what that Dragon's Milk barrel did. Okay, on the bourbon, this is well, a very wickery bourbon. It's grainy. It's grain forward. And this is not proof to the floor. I'm getting quite a bit of... 100 proof. Yeah, there we go. There is a density of sugar. Toasted caramel notes in yeah. there. You, you, you took my wicker. You're just ahead of me, really quick. Oh. I, tr I try to intentionally move fast, because that's the only way that I get the real interaction with my right brain. Okay. If I sit too you long and think, I start overthinking it. You start to filter. And I start undoing the things that I did get. That's fair. So I try to, by moving fast, I, so, it keeps me from overthinking. I think the biggest thing that I'm finding as a common thread is the breadiness mm -hmm. of the beer. I am finding that in this. All right. But it is a wicker and like a sweet tea honey type of deal for me. Oh man. That is a weird palate. Oh, no, that no. That is like red hot cinnamon. You shut the hell up. No, that's not. I don't Ooh. like that. I really like that. It goes sort of watery and thin and then spreads into a cinnamon. Yeah. And then turn slightly creamy, but that mm. not enough to take over the bitey cinnamon. Mm. Did not turn into a cinnamon for me. It went 
a flush of wicker honey bourbon flavors, and then a fruitiness mm. that is the kind of fruit, the angle of fruit that I typically find in like a scotch. It's not a fruity bourbon. It's a like a Highland scotch fruitiness. Now there's cinnamon red hots in that. No, no, no. What are you doing? I'm liking you, a you got the Rona? good. I don't have the freaking Rona. <laughs> this is this is me unroned. <laughs> Okay, go nah, back. Now, there's a cinnamon red hot. I've done it three times, twice I think, now. I think we're both on the same page with the nose. Yeah. But yeah. But that palate, it does this weird zingy cinnamon thing that I can't handle. Still like the nose a lot. Dude. Don't think, like, that same, I know, I know what you're talking about. For me, it doesn't get into red hot territory at all. That cinnamon turns into, like, a spicy version of Speyside Highland fruitiness. Mm. Yeah, it's, spi it's spicy space at Highland fruitiness. I mean, I oh. could see the fruitiness, right? Yeah. But it's so buried in, a, in cinnamon oh, that it's bitey on. to me. Come on, come on. This is, this is why this is what I say. Come on. Come on. Come on. You say, you say, right uh, Come on. Come on. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you say, I hear you say that. What's that? Come on. Come on. <laughs> go back to the beer. Oh, yeah, the beer. I like these both. A lot. I'm gonna tell you this right now. I like the beer better. This was already one of my, you know, preferred, preferred beers. Preferred go-tos. Yeah, and so uh, I already love the beer, and I am enjoying this a lot more than you. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm going once more into the breach. Once more into the breach. So we can fruit. Oh man, come on, come on. I'll give you not I'm, not red I'm hot. Right here. Maybe a flash of, maybe just a momentary flash of a bubble gum. As you lead into cinnamon bubble gum, what's no, this? No, juicy. Like, uh, no, that's big red. It's a bubblelicious. Big red. It's a flash of the bubblelicious. As you move into the spicy, Speyside Highland fruity flavors, and then the finish. The finish is actually kind of classic bourbon for me. Yeah. No, still not getting that. Yeah. Yeah. Even with a little water. Come on. Yeah. I'm, uh... All right. You got the comments. I swear. Do you have the rona? <laughs> I better not. Because <laughs> you're about to teach. I'm about to teach for three weeks in a row. Yeah, what's, what do you do? We have no grace for me being sick this month. Mm -hmm. So if you get the Rona. I've, I have no idea what we're going to do. This is what you do. Because outside the classroom, you're talking about yeah. teaching the, the whiskey yeah, psalm, yeah, yeah. the whiskey psalm class. Yeah. Outside the classroom, they drop the screen down in front of these glass doors. Right. I just stand outside the glass doors. With the mic. The mic will still pick uh, up. It'll still reach. Yeah. So you're outside. You're looking at the glass. Everybody can look through the glass. Sorry, everybody. Everybody can see you. It's like an aquarium. Right. <laughs> it's aquarium, Daniel. Yeah, so you just prop yourself up <laughs> on the railing because uh, there's railing Jesus. right there on the balcony. Smoking a cigar because right. I'm outside and who gives a... And so they, they just don't lower the screen all the way. They do it half mast. That would be so funny. They go half mast. <laughs> so you're outside. Everybody's unrounded. Uh, that would work. It would totally work, but it would be bizarre. But yeah. I'm saying it, it would, would be memorable. People wouldn't have to cancel their plans. That's true. You could suffer. <laughs> for, I could suffer for two days. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uncle Mikey's world. Are you guys on track to just doing videos and distillery business and abandoning whatever it is you guys do there? Uh, mm -hmm. You know. No. Me, no. I'm like 90% there at this point. Yeah. Yeah, I have a, uh, a few clients. Really, like I, emotional clients. Yeah, right? people, like ones you cared about. Yeah, the ones that I, I, I like, that I enjoy working yeah. with. I've worked with for years. Um, I should probably charge them a lot more money. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you're watching this. Yeah, the thing yeah. is, once you work with somebody for years and you develop like a friendship, uh, you can't say, hey, you should really pay me triple what you are. Yeah. Anyways, if they don't watch this channel, it's fine. Hmm. But maybe they should. Because yeah. that could be like a really passive aggressive way of. Yeah, anyways. I need a raise. Anyways. Yeah. It's like, hey, check out this latest episode. I think it may be relevant to your interest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, huh, I don't even really like Dragon's Milk Beer. Uh, oh, what the fuck? <laughs> uh, we got Donnie Marler. You wouldn't be enjoying Blanton's if I hadn't made the bottle you're drinking. Oh, right. It from, I'm a bottle maker from Premier Glass. Right? Oh, wait. This is the guy that designed the Blanton's? Well, I didn't well, design it. No, he made He's it. He's a maker at okay. the glass plant that right. makes the Blanton's bottle. So in That's pretty cool. In terms of, here's the thing. That is such a niche scene. Yeah, right. Because like the glass producer, 
swagger. Yeah. Like to be able to say of all the bottles, like, oh, what do you make? Oh, I'm, I'm assuming friends, there's a convention. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe there's, there's, a, a, there's a glassmaker's convention. What do you do? I do weed pipes. Right. So, what do you do? Uh, I make Blanton's bottles. So who do you think at the glass <laughs> convention, who do you think is like, you know, the S tier top Top of the class. That's the Rydell guys, the uh, wine guys. No, no, no. I'm saying, I'm saying. Because, like, they're the ones that have the fancy suits, but the ones yeah. that really have the street cred. Oh, the street cred. Hand blown. Hand blown. That's the high how West you, guys. That's how you get the street cred. Hand blown. Hand blown. Yeah, we got flaws in our products because they're fucking hand blown. What do you use? A machine? That's cute. Yeah. It's hand adorable. blown. They're the fixie bike riders. So <laughs> right. Of uh, the hipsters the of the glass making scene. <laughs> yeah. It's the hand, hand blown. blown. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that's very cool, Donnie. Uh, yeah, yeah, cool. Thanks for mentioning that. Uh, all right. You know, so not much. my thing, you dig it. I'm digging it. Here's to fighting, stealing, and drinking. If you fight me, a fight for a friend. Steal, may you steal your limits. And if you drink, may, may you drink the limits. <laughs>